What is going on, guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here. Uh, coming at you guys with another video, a improving your game segment again. As uh, promised, I will today will be talking about the climaxes. So, uh, and uh, when to climax them. So, to begin with, let's get on to the specifics as to climaxes. Now, climaxes are the cards that save you in the game and are the game changers, pretty much. They are the ones with the little icons at the top right there. Uh, let me zoom in. Let me get there. These little icons right there at the top left of your screen. So, climaxes. They are the game changers. They do power boosts and everything else. So, what types of climaxes are there? Well, for the red, there's a specific unique one called salvage or the gate. This one allows you to retrieve anything or uh, take anything back from your waiting room. So it's a highly sought, very played card because it's a free hand advantage card whenever it's checked. And it's just generally good. Gives 1,000 power to everything when you play it. So yeah, pretty good. So now moving on to the yellows, we have the Storm card, the wind, mill, the wind. So it has a soul of one. So when you check it, you get a soul as one. And then you have the ability to target one card your opponent controls so like on stage and then just put it back to their hand so this allows you to push for more damage as in allowing you to let's say your opponent has a level three and you have a level one you attack you you get this you get to send this back and now instead your your guys attack uh, you can't do it on the same you can't do it on the same thing but you can probably do it on a different one if i'm right or you can do it on the same one Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but then you get to attack for at least two damage instead of just the one or having side attack. So it does give you options. Next, we have the... Moving on to the greens. We have two. They have the gold bar, or gold, and then they have the gold uh, bag, or whatever. So this gold bar thing, uh, it allows you to... Save your, uh, when it's checked, it allows you to add this to your hand and then put the top card of deck into stock. So as you check it, if you were to check it, you check it, you add this to your hand, and then you put this one in stock. Now, where this one, the difference in this one, this uh, gold one, is that it gives you, a lot, once it's checked, it goes into stock, but it also allows you to put the top card into stock, so it gives you two stock. Now both of them, if I'm correct, they give 1,000 power and one soul. So these all give 1,000 power and one soul. So it's a global type of effect. And finally, rounding off all the climaxes, we got the blue, which is the book. The book is the card that when it is checked, it gives you the draw power. So it lets you draw one card. And it gives 1,000 plus one. So all these climaxes are all the same. Now getting into the, diff the variations of the cards... We have these two case two uh, the two soul cards. So we have one for everyone. Uh, I just couldn't find the yellow one, but I'm pretty sure that there is one. Uh, I just can't find it right now. Anyways, there are this. So they are two K and you get to draw one card, two K and plus one. So these are the most sought after cards to be used in because it gives you uh, precise power and it allows you to draw one card, which is very good. And they are in everything, but there, there's also its a uh, relative, which is the card I will go get because I guess I forgot it. There are the climaxes that have two soul as well, but they give you plus two soul to all the characters, if I'm right, or one character. So it's more. It, this is more aggro, and usually it does. it's not preferred as to be used. Only in those late games where you know you can push for damage or side attack. So usually most players would prefer this over that. But that all depends. Usually there's a climax combo for these as well, rather than these. But it's really just how you want to play the game. Because some older types, like Guilty Crown, I've noticed that perhaps I might need a uh, U-Turp. Because it just allows me to help out with the game. Anyways, now moving on to what should you climax. So... Obviously, what should you clock for the climaxes? Obviously, climaxes aren't that great sometimes in your hand. You prefer to check them 
when you do, but sometimes they're good in your head. Uh, but relatively, you'd always want to at least clock the climaxes if you have a lot of them in your hand because you want to draw monsters or characters rather than got than uh, climaxes. So, but as to be precise, later on in the game, if you were to have cards and you want to clock a climax instead, really, it's to, you have to make the call. But usually, it's preferred to it's suggested to clock the ones that give plus two soul and the ones that are one k globally, because. So, in general, you'd want to clock everything but the ones that say 2k plus 1 draw, because this allows you to draw one card and give plus precision 2, unless if you have a plan to use these 1ks globally, or this one, then you can clock the opposite. But in all reality, the latter is that you should always clock the other ones and save the 2k plus 1s. That is what is really recommended, but then again, climax combos sometimes do rely on the 1k globals, so then you might want to clock something else. That is usually what will happen, so apart from that, I kind of want to add something to this video just because... Oh yeah, if you had, but on the other hand, sometimes if you have good plays, like you have Encore, you have a uh, card such as Her, which, give, which is a booster, but then when you activate Climax, it gives you plus 1000. This and that that, that's a climax combo for something else, and this is good because it then gives you 2k, so it gives you the advantage of the 2k power, so precision power, but it also gives 1000 everything else, so there's total 2k on one thing, and then you also get a climax combo, so relatively perhaps it'd be better to clock this and then keep this this in hand, but that's it all depends on your play of plays and what you have in hand. Really, it all comes down to what you have in hand and what you are ready to drop down to draw those two cards. But sometimes it's not needed to clock, and as explained in my previous video, sometimes you just do not need a clock. Like, it's not suggested all the time to clock, you have to, it's the situation that you're in, and it all depends. So any way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment of improving your way Schwartz game. Uh, I do apologize for being away a little bit. Uh, stuff has been hectic, and uh, I will be coming to you guys, back at you guys with more other, more stuff, and yeah. This has been Tony from Team Divine Pro, signing off.